Good evening, gang. It's the Dark Comic Nerd and my stupid cat, who thinks that every time I get on and do a recording, that for some reason she should jump out of whatever uh, sleeping position she's in and just start acting weird. So, yeah, it is my cat acting weird. Uh, <laughs> I just had to show that to you guys. So this is an episode of This Nerdy Life, everybody. Um, it's been a while since we've done one, hasn't it? And that's because most videos can be classified into nerd showcases or whatnot. But in this particular case, guys, and as you know, my This Nerdy Life videos um, tend to be uh, a bit more... Uh, around the room, I guess is the best way to put it, guys. So the thing is, is that this one, guys, didn't really fit into a nerd showcase because we're not going to really do in detail. So I just wanted to let everybody know what some of the recent books I've been uh, reading are. So the thing is, is that right now, guys, um, and look at that pathetic cat. Look at that pathetic, pathetic cat. Like, um, just... We are taking all the attention, guys, and putting it on you on the video, and it's just distraughting her so much. Um, <laughs> it's sad, isn't it, guys? So um, there are some things, guys, that we're going to show you that eventually we are going to go into great detail on, or at least greater detail. But for right now, we're just going to show you guys what I've got. Um, so one of the things I have been reading, guys, is uh, this one right here. This is the Power Rangers... Nin Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, so Boom Studios, IDW, which is currently not even worth, uh, it's worth about two quarters, I'm not kidding, it's worth, last I heard, it was worth 60 cents a share, that's how bad IDW is doing, so who knows how much longer they'll be around for, no cat, no rubbing your face on my books, um, so I did finish this trade paperback, guys, um, I got this for my birthday, basically. I ordered it for myself. I had pre-ordered it. I wanted it bad. And because I love the first one, and the second one here was fantastic, guys. And we will be going over it at some other time as part of, like, our comic book review, guys. So just FYI. Um, so the other stuff, guys, is I've been really getting caught up on is it wrong to try to pick up girls in a dungeon. So I actually finished, actually, number five. And I think I was already part of the way through. And then I went about getting uh, through number six. And I think I am now... I, I don't think I have the final issues after this. So I'm going to have to order them eventually. Which is exactly what I did, guys, with... Um, is it... Uh, excuse me. In Another World with my smartphone, guys. So as you can see, I got volume two, volume three, and volume four. Now, currently... I have finished Volume 2, which I've had for a while on hand. Um, volume 3 is the one that I ordered along with Volume 4 at the same time. And I'm trying to see... Um, I gotta tell you guys, I love the artwork in this. And I gotta tell you also, the um, is it wrong to try to pick up Girls in a Dungeon? Make sure that if you ever get a chance... You check that out. It's amazing. The inking on it is fantastic. I, I highly recommend the book. This goes into much... It's got more to the manga. And a lot of mangas are like that, guys. Where there's more to the manga... And I did finish this one. So, there we go. Um, Than there is in the anime. So, I highly recommend if you really want to see some other, like, things that happened. So, if you read... If you, Look at an anime guys like this one. They'll show you the basics, but they'll leave out the little things. So to give you a good example of that, um, there's a, okay. From here on out, guys, there's this, this whole almost chapter where he gets into a fight with these other adventure, this other adventure guild. I think there's actually two of them. And, by doing so, they try to actually kidnap the girls. And the thing is, is that um, the guys at the inn that are always playing shogi actually beat these guys up. And there's just a lot of other little details, guys. It builds a bit more of the 
relationship between some of the other girls and Toya here. So the thing is, is that there's more to it than what you see in the anime. In the anime, it's more like bullet points. They're going to just get you where it's important to get to the end of the story. So, um, which is funny because as we go along in this series, he's going to meet more and more new girls. And the way they kept doing the anime was they kind of focused more on um, these other girls he would run into that would want to be his fiance. And as he would run into more of them, um, he would have more and more of these girls around as he was looking for the, like, basically it was Babylon. It was it was kind of like the gar the Garden of Babylon, which is basically a mythical floating garden. Um, but they took it to a whole new extreme in this anime, where it's like it's almost its own giant city, guys. So that's where they focused the anime on over two seasons. Frankly, the manga is a bit different, and that's why it's really good to pick up the manga, guys, on anything if you can. Sometimes. The anime sticks to the source material, but not always. Now, one other thing I picked up, guys, and I ordered the same time as I ordered these books, is I ordered this, guys. This is DC Ruby. This is when they crossed over DC with RWBY, which is Ruby through Rooster Teeth, which is also, much like IDW, slowly going down the freaking drain. Um, so, currently... What they were trying to do was they're trying to mix the DC and the Ruby together. DC is owned by Warner Brothers, and now Ruby is too. So what's going on is they're trying to blend them together. Now, I haven't read this to see if they're going to permanently leave Ruby in the DC universe, but they have been blending them together, both in, um, you know, movies and in the comic books. They all they did a very similar thing where the character these. These uh, heroes, along with some other heroes from Justice League, went over and had their own separate books where they kind of crossed over with different Ruby characters. So the thing is, is that they've done similar stuff, but now like they, they have the Ruby characters. Now they show you two of the new costumes here, but Ruby looks really different um, in this when they get to the DC Universe. So what they're really trying to do is kind of merge remnant with the DC universe, but it's, it is a filler in between the two Huntsman movies. Um, you guys know that on the dark comic nerd channel, we did a review. So there is that you guys can always look at it. Wes and I did a review. It was a good little movie. And the second one is coming out shortly. But the thing is, is that this does not fully follow that. So, I want you guys to know that this is a whole different thing. I will do another in-depth thing about this, just like I will eventually on the Power Rangers Ninja Turtles. So, along with that, guys, and we're just going to let you see the floor, and I know there's not a lot of lighting. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, somewhere around here, we have a few other things, guys, um, that kind of fit into that general very broad category of um of uh stuff that we might not do a very well like i said some of this we will do specific stuff on other stuff like the manga i wasn't going to do like detailed detailed stuff guys so i wanted to make sure that you guys knew what i have currently been up to as far as what i've been reading um the thing is, is that, to be honest, guys, I can't seem to find the other thing I wanted to show you. Um, I believe the possibility for that is because I did buy a bunch of stuff for myself that I am currently putting aside for myself, guys, for um, uh, Christmas. So I would imagine that's the case. Now, what we're going to do, guys, we're going to switch. Yeah, there I am. So there I am, guys. Um, the good thing is I love this new phone. Uh, it allows me to switch from the outer camera to the inner camera. Something that, believe it or not, I really couldn't do very often with my other uh, work phone. That was the way I used to record stuff with this. And then I left my job. And the thing is, is I don't have a work phone anymore. But I have this phone. And this phone is infinitely better than the phone I had from work. So, um, sorry about that, guys. I actually forgot that the camera is right there in the middle of everything. So, it's hard to hold on to it. But my hand on this side is getting really tired so i wanted to switch up but yeah um 
I can't seem to find what else it, if it was. So the most likely scenario is, and sorry about getting close to my face, guys. Um, when I'm thinking, I'm just not looking at where the camera is. Um, I put it aside for Christmas stuff. I wouldn't be surprised. I tend to get a lot of stuff and then it, it's like, okay, this belongs to what we're going to get West for Christmas. This belongs to a family thing. Uh, I've already got like, for example, what I know I'm going to give my, um, uh, folks for their Christmas gift, which is just a joint Christmas thing I do. Uh, my folks aren't big into gifts. So the thing is, is that I just picked them up something that's very crisp. Ooh, excuse me. Very Christmassy. And uh, I'm going to give them that early on so they can put it out as a decoration. Um, I will tell you guys while I've got you here, and there's a reason I'm not sitting down, guys. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that I just am very antsy at the moment. But, of course, the real problem is, and I'm going to fix that, is there we go. I forgot, since the camera's here, that means I can hold it like this on my phone with my other hand. And unlike my tablet and some of the other stuff that has the camera up in the middle at the top, it won't put it in the way of things. And I think I can do this a little better. But um, I did want to tell everybody, uh, if everybody remembers a couple months back, uh, it was early in the summer, um, we had that incident with the Hamels. And the thing is, I don't talk to them much anymore. But actually, Jeff Hamill did come out to me uh, recently at church and actually talk to me for a few minutes. And I think that is moving things along in a positive direction. I think now um, there's a possibility that there's probably not a lot. It's like putting the first log in a bridge. Uh, maybe there's a little rope up. Maybe there's a, a little first log. But we don't have a bridge all the way across the ravine. Not by a long shot. But... It is making some more progress. He asked me how my new job was going. Talked to me for a few minutes about that. And that worked out things. I think he's come to the... Con I think he might have finally come to the conclusion. That not having any friends around sucks. And part of that makes me believe that's the case. Because he went to another guy that he got pissed and stopped talking to for almost a year or two now. Um, over a PlayStation because this guy had a PlayStation and Jeff thought that he should like, since he never used the PlayStation, this other guy, Dave never used the PlayStation. He figures that, Oh, well, Dave should let me have it so I can, you know, mod it or have a backup PlayStation. And Dave didn't have any of it. And I agree. Dave was being kind of stupid considering how much Jeff had done for him. Um, but, at the same time, it is Dave's PlayStation. And Jeff went, like, totally ballistic and realized that, you know, and I meant I, I helped on this, that Dave was not a really good friend. And so he stopped talking to her for a long time. And then suddenly, suddenly, when he doesn't have as many friends around anymore, hey, he runs into Dave at church and he's like, hey, Dave, why didn't you come over and game? And I think you'll actually see there's a couple things on his Jeffrey and Debbie's gaming channel that he has on YouTube where he's actually started having Dave over again now and playing. Now, I assume they were old videos, but then I saw Dave actually sitting with him at church and now I know they're talking. And the thing is, is you know what I feel bad about with Dave a little bit is, is and I admit, it's also that you, when you're wronged, you kind of like to reach out to the other people that were wronged by the same person. So not Dave kind of, but Dave was entitled to go hang out with Jeff again. The only thing is, is Dave doesn't know what I know. And that is, is that Dave, you wronged Jeff, which means if you wrong him again, he going to probably dump you at the curb, man. And so Dave doesn't seem to realize that his friendship is tentative basically because, and that's why I don't think I want to be, hanging out friends with Jeff Hamill. I don't mind being apart friends. I have a, I have a lot of them. I have a friend in New Hampshire, uh, Chris, that I don't really talk to. Uh, well, I, I talk to him a fair amount, but I don't hang out with him. Not like you guys see me hanging out with Wes. And the thing is, is that it's like, you know what? Um, I don't want to have one of these tentative things with the Hamels where it's like, well, look, uh, my friendship is based upon how often I agree with you and how often we're getting along. And the minute we're not getting along, suddenly we're not friends again. And if, th if we somehow can put it all water under the bridge, then when do I know? It's like his wife said, he's, he's like, oh, his wife's like, well, I don't want to get it. We don't want anything from you anymore because we don't know when it's going to be used against us. And really what it was is I, you guys remember from a few months ago, probably what I really said was, 
I said that people that owe you money, you think they would have more respect to let you have a little bit of leeway because you've done them a favor. You've gotten them stuff. And some of which he asked for. Some of the stuff she asked me to get him. And I didn't just give it to him. They asked me to get it. And so the thing is, is that I'm doing them favors and I'm spending money and I hadn't gotten the return money back yet. And it really didn't matter to me about how long it took until people are nuking you from orbit and people are doing stuff. And it's like, all I wanted people, I didn't want to use the fact that they owed me money and I bought them things as leverage. No, what I wanted to do was prove to people a point I was making, which is people should be kinder to people that do them favors. You don't just let people do you favors and owe people money. And at the same time, you you can't look left and right at the same time. You can't be both good and evil at the same time. I suppose you could say, oh, I can be good and evil. Not at the same time, you can't. You can be good here and then evil maybe later on, but you can't do it at the same time. So here's the thing, guys, is that when they are sitting there and telling you, see, it's it's an old adage of two things can be true at the same time. Well, in this case, no. This case, it's like, guess what, folks? You either are a two-faced bitch or you are somebody's friend, which means you either accept the fact that you owe them money and they have done you favors and they have done things to help make your life easier and then you give them leeway. Or you decide that you are the most important thing on the face of the earth and that everybody else should be bowing down to you. Now that sounds extreme, but you get the gist of the exaggeration I'm making. I'm making emphasis, I'm making exaggeration for point. Um, I'm using a metaphor, a little bit of hyperbole. So the thing is, is that what happened was, is that I said, look, I don't think that it's it's like the old saying that says you shouldn't uh, crap where you eat. You Meaning that's an old saying that means basically you shouldn't cause trouble where you have to deal with these people all the time. Well, guess what? I also think this tends to follow through with this scenario where it's like if you owe people money and if people have done you favors, being a rotten person to them and definitely not listening to them and not doing stuff makes you look like a really horrible person. And so the, the after effects of what came about after that, and then a whole bunch of other stuff that we're not going to get into, just it left a horrible taste in my mouth. Now, I think they're willing to finally do the, the infamous Hamill thing, which is everybody realizes that, you know what? Life sucks without other people to share it with. And so they're going back to church. And I think that also makes them feel guilty. So I think people want to just reach out a little bit. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But if you reach out to somebody on the grounds that you feel guilty, not about the fact that you want to build a bridge of forgiveness between them, then guess what? It's bound to fail again. The bridge is bound to fall apart again as soon as something doesn't go one person or the other person's way. So the problem is, is that that's going to happen probably between him and Dave. And I ain't getting involved in that either. I'm very happy that people want to, you know, mend fences. But the problem is, is that how long before they want to knock the fence down again is the problem. So I'm keeping my distance, but I appreciate what's going on. And do I think I'm still going to, I still want to do a video talking about how well his channel is doing. I want to do a video about my friend Aaron's YouTube channel and see if we can get that doing well. Um, I want to see what I can do to promote other people's YouTube channels that I that I know and I respect. Um, and that I don't think I'll get some kind of blast. Like, like uh, when I play my fake grand order, I don't do stuff about Mist because I don't know him personally. And so if I did a thing about him, he might not be happy if I went to his channel and did a whole thing about his channel. I'd like to. I'd like to show off some of these things and show people these people that I respect playing stuff in the gaming community. But going back to the situation, guys, with the Hamels, um, I really felt that a lot of... Um, I think they misinterpreted a lot of what I said and felt that there was a lot of 
accusations coming their way. And in fact, the matter is, is I only spoke the truth. I literally saw what I saw. And I think what it was is, I think what got happened was, is that didn't happen. And it's like, they were becoming exactly what they were accusing their friend Dave of doing. Uh, that didn't happen. Uh, it, it's like, now they didn't say that to me, but they acted like it. Like, this isn't true. You are not seeing what you think you're seeing. No, no, I lived through it. So I am definitely seeing what I'm seeing. I opinionated on it. You didn't want the world to know on my YouTube channel. So I took a lot of flack from them. But here's the thing is, uh, first off, there's a First Amendment. I'm entitled to that. Two, the fact of the matter is, is that, yes, um, I accepted the consequences that they might not want to be friends with me, but did my life turn around in a good way? And am I a lot better off? Yeah, I am. I'm a hell of a lot better off. Wes and I guys do stuff on my, um, my YouTube channel here all the time together. We hang out once a week. Heck, we just did a video last night, guys. So I got a friend that can actually lives close by, can actually drive himself here and can come to my house. Uh, Hamill couldn't do that. He, he just couldn't do that. Um, now, did he used to be able to drive? Yes. Has he chosen because of his health and a couple other things not to drive? Yes, I agree. So I understand his predicament. But the thing is, is that a real friend would also understand that there are things that actually make me more comfortable. Now, I think a lot of times, guys, we talk about real friends, real friends, and the, the fingers can be pointed in all directions. I say a real friend would do this. He could say, well, by that definition, you should do this. Here's what it really comes down to is if there is a friendship going and there are things that are uncomfortable between the two of the, let's say there's just two individuals you can work it out sometimes. And that was what was happening for the longest time. But there are also times where you'd rather have a friend that's like Wes is, for example, at the same time, there are things about Jeff Hamill that I did. I like that. I didn't that, like Wes is persistent about like, I want to watch an anime and Wes is trying to show me stuff on his phone almost every second, every second. Um, I'm not kidding you. I shit you not like every second. It's, it's something historical. Now, some of it's pretty good, but his timing is impeccably bad. But I get over it because Wes is my friend and I respect his friendship. And that's what happened with the Hamels for the longest time. And then, guys, it's like it always is. Something usually breaks the, the straw. There's always a straw that breaks the camel's back. The problem is, is that I just kept giving and giving and giving and doing and doing and doing and thinking this. I just agree with Jeff Hamill. Uh, and get along with his wife and you know he's on his third one um and i just you know do all this stuff and i do all this stuff and i do all this stuff and i figure hey he listens to me i listen to him we do favors for each other da, 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 da. and everything's copacetic and then one day everything changes everything changes and the thing is is that it really came boiled down to the fact that i was heading for an emotional breakdown I had already done some videos on my Facebook that pretty much sounded like I was halfway there, if not all the way there. Um, I was in a bad spot. Now, did I share this with the Hamels? No, I didn't share this with the Hamels because it came on suddenly because of work-related trauma. Now, the thing is, though, is that when it all came down to it, everybody could have been a little bit more receptive. Um, there was different ways I could have done it without being as mad about being shunned for a couple of days, um, whether it be intentional or non-intentional. Um, and they definitely could have responded better than, um, you're accusing us of this, this, that, and the other thing. And it's like, no, what I'm doing is I'm pointing out facts that I literally saw. I literally saw your husband do this. I literally saw your husband do that. The problem is, is that you're reading into it, uh, with all due respect, like a lot of women I know. So I'm not going to say a typical woman, but a lot of women I personally know and a lot of women I deal with, they, she was reading, his wife was reading into it and was making a mountain and a molehill. Oh, you're saying bad things about our marriage. Oh, you're saying my husband's abusive. Oh, you're, and no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm literally telling you that I'm terrified of your husband 
and I don't feel comfortable going over to your house as much anymore. And now I can't reach out to you online because of whatever the reason is. And all these things are coming up along with the work abuse. And it really was abuse folks. I, I I'm telling you it was, um, and a lot of other things. And I couldn't handle it all at once. And the problem was, is the way I went about reacting about it is what really did it. And that's where it really just fell apart. But the thing is, is that I'm not going to say they were bad friends. I'm just going to say the reactions were way past what they should have been. I mean, I could recount all the things they did to me with the boom, boom, boom precision. But the problem was, is it was very precise very surgical, almost like a military operation. Just let's, let's remove, let's remove, you know, dark right out of our lives. Let's remove them here, 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 here. And it was boom, 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 boom. One thing after another. And that's why I call it nuked from orbit. So basically like a satellite up there that just boom, there you go. You are a spot. Like ever anybody ever seen that justice league episode where they've got the big, they've got their big, uh, justice league satellite up there. They and they they did their primary fusion laser out and just nuked that uh, boom. It was like that. It's like when they took it, even though it wasn't them, the Cadmus Lab episode with Lex Luthor took over the space satellite and then blasted Cadmus, just like that. Big smoke and wreckage. So I'm sorry, but that's really what it was like. And it was just bad timing on top of bad timing on top of bad timing. But things like that happen, and God allows things like that happen to see our resolve and see what we're going to do and sometimes push us in a certain direction. So when I left my job and I got done being friends with the Hamels, it pushed me in a direction to have a different set of friends, at least one, um, limit my circle, get into my gardening more, which means getting outside, getting in touch with the world that the Lord has made for us. Um, I can't say it made me more spiritual, but the thing is, is that I have now picked a job that allows me to go to church every Sunday. So mm -hmm, there you go. So, hmm, it's like things had to happen a certain way. Now, do I think that God would destroy a friendship? No. Do I think that God knows the direction this friendship was going in and that I had some responsibility? I see folks, I reacted poorly, like I said, under stress, not from them, but from work. Um, so I, I am definitely to blame in that regards, how everything continued on. I think it looked bad, but God can work with things that are bad. And so it all worked out good in the long run. And I think now we are seeing things not go back to a, um, sense of normalcy, but they're going to a new place. And that place says, I don't want to see bad things happen to the Hamels. And I assume they don't want to see bad things happen to me anymore. But shall we ever shake hands on the battlefield again? I don't know. That's where it goes, folks. Now, he's going to hang with Dave and his any new friends he might have on his side of the on his side of the battlefield. I'm going to hang with my friends like Wes and stuff on my side and do my thing, and he's going to do his thing. And that's where it's really going to go down to, guys. So. I don't talk about it much anymore because it nothing was changing significantly. But the fact that on Sunday he came up and actually talked to me, asked me about work and asked me about a few other things. Well, it all basically revolved around work. And I think tried to actually reach out means that I felt that it deserved an honorable mention guys here on this nerdy life. And that's not why I got on guys. I got on to show you all that cool stuff I got and what I've been reading. And I've really been getting into my manga and my trade paperbacks and guys starting this Friday. Oh yeah. I got my fate. If everything works out right, I got my fate samurai remnant coming out and I am going to be playing that and I'm going to be live streaming that guys. So be aware that that will be live streamed. I'm doing really good on my warriors all-star. You guys need to be watching my live broadcast folks. If you come on, it's gameplay. Who doesn't like watching people play games? Um, but if you like watching people play PS4 games, I, I've been playing stuff, Minecraft. Uh, I'm doing uh, like a Minecraft thing almost every Saturday morning now, practically. I'm doing other broadcasts with my Warriors All-Star. I'm doing some other stuff with Wes. We play something. We just did Ninja Turtles last night, Shredder's Revenge. It was a fun old time. Um, thing is, guys, is that you know what? What it comes down to is, is that... Um, I understand it's different strokes for different folks. Um, 
So you might not get into that kind of stuff. But if you do, or you like this channel, think about swinging in when I do a live broadcast. And I know that I don't notify people because when I was notifying people during the, when I was notifying people, most of the time, guys, that whole week when I was doing my birthday stuff, it didn't matter. Nobody was showing up. Now I had the same odds that somebody would show up to one of those broadcasts that I had, whether I notified people or not. So yeah, sometimes I just, just, you know, there it is just like Ronald dragon of America. He'll just do his, sometimes he'll say something and then he'll do it a couple hours later. Uh, if I thought people were paying attention to the YouTube post more often, I'd post it and then I'd do it. But I just keep an eye out guys. If you're a subscriber, I believe if I'm not mistaken, you get a notification. I get a notification as a subscriber on a whole bunch of YouTube channels that I'm on. And they always tell me, Oh, the, when they schedule it, it's like, Oh, half an hour. And this will be going now. I don't schedule mine because I'm not always sure I'll make it on time, but here's the real kicker guys is I know that whether I, they schedule their broadcast or not, it will tell me when they're live. It will tell me when they go live, which means I know that if you're a subscriber, you will get a notification when I go live. So swing on in, check out what I do, guys. The Warriors All-Star, I just got to a pivotal moment where I can use any character I've already unlocked. And now I'm going through the final chapter where you beat the big bad guy. Because I guess I finally did all the little separate things I needed to do with each of the characters. Because there's three major characters, and then each character recruits all these different heroes from the um koei tecmo series i hope i said that right um and the thing is is that now the three major characters the three the three siblings basically um i've completed each of their the significant things they need to do so that i actually unlocked the final cutscene, and now i'm into a different part of the whole game where i'm actually doing another um I'm doing another kind of story. I'm I'm doing the final bad guy story instead of doing all the ones that are now, oh, you're uh, attacking this person and then the other guy's attacking this person. No, everybody's joined up now. Everybody is attacking this one bad guy, Yomi. So the thing is, is that it's like, oh yeah, it's good. It's good old times. So I'm really happy about that. But in my case, guys, I'm actually going to be, yeah, it's almost nine o'clock, but I don't usually go to bed till nine o'clock till nine 30. So I'm actually going to go take a bath with, um, some nice, um, bubble bath, um, with some melatonin in it and see if that helps me sleep better tonight because sleep's been, difficult lately because i couldn't actually tell you it's just weird i think it has to do with the temperatures dropping in my house so currently let's see 66 or almost 67 not bad but will it drop to almost 60 by morning oh heck yeah especially because the nights are getting colder guys we're into the high 40s and low 50s and that means we're not too far off at night from getting into late fall and winter weather daytime isn't too bad it's still a bit higher than it should be because it's in the 70s that's usually what you see for summer or late summer but yeah it gets dry and it gets cold so the thing is, is that i think it's harder for me to sleep now and of course it dries out the old sinuses and the thing is is that makes it harder for me to sleep i'm going to snore more often which means I don't always notice that's what's waking me up, but that could be what's waking me up. I noticed that my ears were more plugged this morning. That was a problem. I had to take some aspirin for that. So lots of little things like that make it harder to sleep. So I'm going to try to do something that hopefully make it easier. But uh, I digressed, I think, enough. Um, so yeah, I wanted to let you guys know, um, those are some of the books down there, guys, that I've currently been reading or that I will be about to read, or I'm going to do, uh, nerd showcases on or comic reviews. I usually like to, um, kind of leave them as a nerd showcase, but I think I'm going to start making, um, a whole comic review section. It's been a while since I reviewed anything comic related, so I might go back into my videos and see what I actually called them because it's been that long. Um, but yeah, and like I said, I want to talk a little bit, about, like I said, about my some uh, other YouTube channels, um, some of which we've talked about before. Um, and the thing is, guys, is I just wanted to share with everybody uh, some of the stuff that's going on in my personal life. I don't mind sharing that with you guys because we've shared it before on this channel when uh, things were really changing. And I got to tell you guys, things are going great at work. Um, I, I have no complaints. Uh, things are working out a lot better now. Um, 
you know, I honestly have no complaints about anything, guys. I think the Lord has done me some big favors. And I think I owe the Lord a lot more than I give back, especially because I should be witnessing guys to people. But I think the best I can do is do it right here, guys, on YouTube, because doing it one on one with people is I'm not a big public speaker. And I really have a problem because if you were to meet me on the street and and ask me about my faith and we talked about it, that's a different story than me approaching somebody saying, hey, uh, I want to tell you about Jesus Christ, but here's the problem. I'm afraid you're going to take something out and stab me with it because in the cities and everything near me and probably in a lot of other places, a lot of people have to worry about that. But a lot of people will be like, well, if you have faith in the Lord, then you'll know this is more important. It's like, yeah, you're right. You're not wrong, but I'm still a scared about getting stabbed. So there you go. Um, or anything else that might happen, you know, given a gun waved in my face or have somebody punch me over it or something like that, you know? So the only thing I can do guys is tell you right now, you guys have heard me talk about my faith. I've, I've told a lot of you guys that you've seen, uh, the Lord is using it to direct me in good ways men fences between people that i i used to be friends with them so it's not like i'm many fences with enemies but i kind of am kind of not um but things are happening in miraculous ways the lord's giving me enough money to buy some um some stuff here and there i'm, I'm gonna get the last of the birthday gifts at the end of the week um you know, the Lord has blessed me in a lot of ways, guys. I have a great job. Um, even though I am having some problems with my car, uh, the Lord, I think, has helped me from, like, having worse problems with that. Um, and, I mean, I, I just don't know how many different ways. I mean, just it gives you a whole new perspective on life guys. And people are like, Oh, Christians are so bad. And, uh, Oh, you know, Oh, we, we, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want to feel the guilt of all the bad things I do. Uh, okay. Think of it this way. If you see that you're doing something bad and that it might make you feel guilty, doesn't that already mean that you're closer to being a Christian than you think? I mean, because, if you're a horrible, rotten person that doesn't believe in the Lord, you're just going to do whatever you want and not even feel any remorse about it. Which means if you're sitting there and you're listening to my voice and you're thinking to yourself, man, I don't like what I'm hearing because it makes me feel guilty. That means the Lord's already talking to you. I hate to tell you. It means you're the Lord is talking to you as your conscience telling you you shouldn't be doing some stuff. Which means you're already part of the way there. You just don't seem to realize it. Which means you're never going to be able to smash that out of your head or do anything to get rid of it. It's always going to be there nagging you, telling you that you know in the back of your mind that something you're doing is wrong. All you got to do, guys, is repent of it, which means to turn away from it, and go to the Lord and ask for forgiveness. And everybody acts like, oh my gosh, I'm giving my soul to somebody. And it's like... Take my word on it. Wouldn't it be better to give your soul to somebody like God than to some of these other people that are trying to take it from you, either in the government or on the street or, you know, wherever you're frequenting that you're not happy? Um, you know, something's always trying to claim I hate to tell people, but something's always trying to claim your soul, whether it be alcohol or drugs or something like pornography or um, you know, something that you get into that, you know, somewhere in the deep recesses of your mind probably isn't the best. Some of it might even be illegal. And that tells you that you're doing something wrong. And the thing is, is that it's trying to basically take you over. I hate to tell you, it does. That's why people talk about addictions being so bad. So the thing is, guys, is that if you know that you have that problem, I'm telling you, God's the best guy to talk to. Friends are always awesome. But if you got a real friend that knows God, he's got more wisdom than you ever would know. Because the thing is, is that that friend is going to everything. If he knows Christ, everything he tells you, if it sounds like it's beyond belief, it's because he's getting the information from up there. So it's like having your, it's like having a permanent link to all the cable channels, guys. You're, you have a link to the satellite. God is almost the same way. Basically, the things you should be doing right in life, 
you have a permanent hookup once you know the Lord. You're basically, you're just linked. Boom, boom. So you know at all times what the right thing to do is and what the wrong stuff to do is and what you can do to make your life better and maybe the people around you better too. And that's the thing, guys. That's the only thing I can tell you. Uh, I've been a Christian for many, many, many decades. Well, many, many, many years, a couple of decades. So, but the thing is, is that really it came to me when I was 23. So it's been, um, now that I'm 44, it's been at least over 20 years. And I just, that was when I really renewed it and realized that I had been doing it wrong all the years prior and took a different approach on it. Now, like I said, witnessing to people, that's tough for me, at least in person. But as far as um, trying to be a better person every single day because of Christ, yeah, that isn't as hard as you think. Some people, it might be harder than others. So I won't say that your path is going to be easy like mine. And sometimes mine isn't easy. But I can tell you this, guys. Um, I don't think I'd be here talking to you without Christ because I went through a lot of depression phases through the many, many years prior to this, I, you know, had a divorce. I had all these other problems. I still have an anger issue, but the thing is, is that a lot of my depression stuff has pretty much gone by. I've noticed that, yes, it seems to be less of a problem. Um, now that I'm, um, not hanging out with Hamill and we're not talking about negative stuff all the time, because with Wes, you don't really get that. He doesn't really talk about negative stuff all the time. So the thing is, is that, and I won't say that I'm not at fault too, guys, about the stuff we used to talk about at Hamill's house. But the thing is, is that, you know what, guys, um, I think that I would not be here talking to you. Uh, I won't say what might be, I might, I could just be, I could just be at a, you know, mental ward for all you guys know. It might not be it might not be permanent, <laughs> might not be permanent out of the picture stuff. It just means that I might not have the opportunity to talk to you guys like this. Um, if, uh, I didn't have the Lord, cause I always remember that my life isn't my own. It's the Lord's. So the thing is, is that that's, what's important guys. But, um, a little soup for the soul tonight, guys, at the same time as all the other stuff I wanted to fill you in on, but that's it guys. I think I've, uh, I think I've <laughs> taken you guys to a couple different places. We don't get a lot of people that watch this nerdy life stuff anyway. So um, I'm sure a lot of people, if nothing else, turn me off as soon as I talk about faith stuff. But if there's any of you out there that have a faith, maybe it's not the same faith I have, but as there is a faith, well, I hope maybe you enjoyed this and maybe it'll give you something to think about and maybe some encouragement. But in the meantime, guys, this has been the Dark Comic Nerd. I hope you guys have a great night. I am still going to go take that bath and I will catch you guys later. Peace.